Will an exodus of ACC schools lead to an expansion of the Big Ten? Let's talk about it. Conference realignment is always in the news, so we're back on the Big Mountain to keep you updated. Hey, it's great to have you here on the mountain. If you're new to the channel, I am JY, and this is my good friend, Steve. Steve, I want to talk about the ACC and the Big Ten, because we're Big Ten focused here, uh, as well as Mountain West, because, you know, as it seems, this could be the, the next conference that's going to have some sort of significant change. You know, I, I don't know if that change uh, is going to be to the extent of the Pac-12 or not. You know, I'm sure a lot of ACC uh, fans that want the ACC to remain hope that's not the case uh, but time will tell we'll find out you know what exactly is going to happen there here on the mountain you know we have been focused on expansion and realignment here for about the past six months we were very focused on the Pac-12 and its demise we continue to follow Oregon State and Washington State especially now uh, that they have a scheduling agreement with the Mountain West one of the conferences we follow here uh, similarly we've been following the FSU ACC lawsuits very very closely doing uh, an update to those as, as they come out with new uh, lawsuits and motions and all that kind of stuff uh, and we're going to cover the the Clemson ACC lawsuit as well we just began uh, covering that we had our first episode at the end of last week we have another episode coming out tomorrow on that uh, so if, if that is of interest to you make sure you are uh, subscribed to our channel get on the notifications so so uh, you know you know when these things are coming out but we're going to have a Clemson episode coming out again tomorrow about the ACC lawsuit um so let's let's get into this a, a little bit deeper. Let's talk about every one of the ACC schools, possibly. You know, some schools are going to have a lot more to talk about than than others. Um, and I want to talk about current ACC schools. So I'm, we're not going to be talking Cal, Stanford, or SMU right now. Um, and, and we'll break this down into what we know. I also want to hear from you and your thoughts, Steve. Uh, that has somebody has inside connections with Penn State. You know, you hear, hear some things from Penn State. You can glean some things off of that. So as we go through this, I'll, I'll kind of set some things up for some of these schools. And I definitely want to hear from what you have to say and, and your insider information, if you will, uh, from Penn State on whatever you're hearing from these schools. Um, so with that, we're going to start with FSU. Um, and I'm also going to get into some UNC information that we really haven't covered too much here. A lot of comments have been made recently uh, coming out of uh, the, the chairman there for, for UNC. Um, so we're, we're definitely going to get into that. But first, I want to read a statement that was issued last week just after Clemson had uh, you know, put their filing forth. This came from Jim Ryan, who is the chair of the ACC Board of Directors, and Jim Phillips, the ACC Commissioner. Mr. Ryan's also the uh, president of the University of Virginia. So I'm going to read what they say here in this statement. The ACC remains confident that its agreements with all its members will be affirmed by the courts. Clemson, along with all ACC members, voluntarily signed and re-signed the 2013 and 2016 grant of rights, which is binding through 2036. In addition, Clemson agreed to the process and procedures for withdrawal. The conference's legal counsel will vigorously enforce the agreements and bylaws in the best interest of the ACC's current and incoming members. So, Steve, I want to start here with the Magnificent Seven. Anybody that follows the ACC, they know who the, uh, the Magnificent Seven are. Um, and then we'll get into the, the other schools as well, see if, see if you have uh, anything uh, of interest with those. I'm going to start with the three schools within the Magnificent Seven that voted against adding Cal, Stanford, and SMU. Those were FSU, Clemson, and UNC. So let's start with FSU, the school we followed the most so far here yeah, sure. on the Big Mountain. We've been covering these lawsuits very closely. It's clear that FSU wants out of the ACC as soon as possible. And I mean like yesterday yeah. or, you know, August of 2023. They want out. Um, and, and, and as you have said on previous videos, Steve, um, that, that you think that you've been hearing some things from 
the Big Ten, but I'm going to say from people within Penn State, uh, that an invite may be awaiting FSU once they can actually finalize a withdrawal from the ACC. Can you speak to what you're hearing? I know you've talked about that a little bit in the past. Would love for any sort of update you can give us on FSU. Yeah, so so just to be clear, you know, in my connection, I've made, over the years, I've made, some, through my professional life, I've made some connections within uh, the Penn State program, within the, the administration, as mm. well as inside the athletic department. Uh, it, it's not like I'm, I don't work for the school or anything, right. so I'm not speaking for the school. But, you know, I, I talk to people, I keep my ear to the ground. And, and so the information I get could be tainted from a Penn State perspective. There might be other people, you know, that are associated with other programs in the Big Ten that are that are hearing different things or, or are focused on different things because maybe their school would like to see certain school join or whatever. Um, so, but talking about Florida State, as far as Florida State is concerned, I am uh, near certain uh, on the fact that the Big Ten is very interested in Florida State. Um, they they meet almost every criteria. Um, technically, University of Florida would tell you they're the flagship university, but basically, Florida, the state of Florida, is so big. Florida State really, you know, is a second flagship university mm-hmm. for that state. Large public university. They've really increased their research. Uh, they've been trying to get AAU status, AAU membership for years and years and years, which is important to the Big Ten presidents. There are some people who will tell you it's not important at all. Those people yeah. are wrong. The, the Big Ten <laughs> president, it's not the end-all be-all because the Big Ten would take a school like a Notre Dame if it wasn't yeah. an AAU member, but it is important to them. Um, and, and really, Florida State meets a lot of the criteria. The expectation uh, is that they will become AAU members. Right. They have everything the Big Ten is looking for. I, I know the Big Ten is interested, especially certain programs within the Big Ten would love to see that added. Um, so my expectation is Florida State will be the first school out of the ACC, and they'll be the first school to get that Big Ten invite, the right. official invite. Who knows? Maybe they've got an informal invite already. Right. Who knows? Um, and I anticipate them playing. You know, I've talked about this in a couple different episodes. Originally, I was thinking 2027. I think it could be as early as 2026. Okay. It's not going to be as early as some Florida State fans would sure. like to be, like next year in the right. Big Ten. But I see Florida State becoming a Big Ten member and starting league play probably 26, 27. Uh, I feel very just very confident about that. I will say my last point on them is. I think all the fan base is probably mixed, about 50-50 if they would love to go to the Big Ten yeah. or some would love to go to the SEC, mm-hmm. is depending on how they look at the cultural fit and things like that. But for me, Florida State, all the indications they've made, they have not tried to play nice with ESPN. They've, they've taken the gloves off for ESPN Disney. Um, so for me, I just see maybe they would be a cultural fit in the SEC, but I see them wanting to go to the Big Ten, the, the, the richest conference, the biggest payouts, and... Uh, and really get away from that, you know, ESPN, Disney contract fiasco that was with the ACC. So, Love it. Love it. Yeah, and, you know, really, it's once they get out, uh, guaranteed they're looking at one of the Power 2 conferences, right? You're looking at either the uh, SEC or the Big Ten. You know, I've heard a little bit of new rumorings that they're going to start a new ACC or a new uh, conference. I I consider that to be... uh, 0.001 0.001 like that that is not the end all be all there's two power conferences right now if if any of these schools goal is to uh grow and and continue to grow and get that revenue share you got to join those two you're not going to get it by creating a new conference the only thing i could see on that is like a a, a bridge you know if they had to do something for two or three years kind yeah. of like we're seeing with the pack right until they could they could merge into the power conferences whatever but i agree with you these top especially these top schools that we're talking about they are looking for a spot in the p2 and I, they're, they're probably going to get one for sure yeah well let's get into clemson i mean you mentioned fsu not playing nice with espn slash disney for different reasons i yeah. think um and so clemson just began their own court battle uh with the acc they have not at least we're very early in this we're only a week into this but um they are playing nice with mm-hmm. for now espn um, and, and overall, playing nicer than FSU now. They're, again, still very early on here, uh, so we'll see what happens. But they're, they're really um, just looking at two main aspects in terms of their court filing for now. That's the scope of the grant of rights and the enforceability of the withdrawal penalty. So those are the two answers for the most part. They also talk fiduciary duty. Um, but those are the two answers they need to know in order to plan to get out. Um, as I said, we did an episode on the Clemson filing. 
last week. I'll put a link up above. We're going to be doing our second episode uh, tomorrow. We'll release it tomorrow. That's going to be on the ACC's lawsuit against Clemson because of the filing they did. It's a nice big circle. Some repetitive stuff there, obviously, with with the FSU. Um, But, uh, you know, as of right now, um, you know, these filings and, 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 and with other public comments, they seem to be the, the next most likely to probably leave or at least um, looking to leave publicly, you know, filing lawsuits and, and uh, de- it's not declarations, it decla- declaratory, I think. Declaratory. Yeah, yeah, I got to I got to say it correctly. Nobody likes when I say declaratory. It's declaratory. No. Declaratory. OK, declaratory. Uh, 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 an attorney corrected me. Declaratory. OK. Yes, I will do my best. But anyway, um, back to why we're, what we're here for. Yeah. So are you hearing anything from a Big Ten side? I mean, not a are they leaving? They want to leave? No, no. Does the Big Ten have any interest, to your knowledge, mm-hmm. in Clemson right now? So here's the thing. Clemson absolutely is, is a school. I, I believe it's probably 100% certainty that they get out of the ACC. Mm-hmm. They're a school. They have the media value that will be attractive to both the Big Ten and the SEC. Um, you know, we've seen that. We've seen the numbers. Um, you know, they get good ratings. Um, you know, they have that value. Now, some of that's been their awesome performance yeah. on the field the last 10 years or so. But I think they're, they're you know, absolutely attractive to uh, the power two. Now, here's the thing. Um, I've asked my my uh, contacts at Penn State multiple times about Clemson because it, it makes a lot of sense, mm-hmm. um, in my opinion. However, what they've said is they, they're just not hearing anything on their end about Clemson. That it's just not, it's not something that, that really any of the Big Ten schools uh, are talking about. And they're, and they're not putting down Clemson per right. se. It's just that from, from what they're hearing, there just hasn't been any talks of the Big Ten with Clemson. And I think that makes sense for a couple different reasons. Uh, Clemson, I think most Clemson fans would probably rather be in the SEC, cultural, cultural fit, uh, things like that. Um, like you mentioned, you know, in Clemson and their filing, they really, they, they separated themselves from attacking the ESPN mm-hmm. side. I think they want to stay in that ESPN Disney bubble and, and get into the SEC. So I think they're being real careful with that. Uh, and as far as the Big Ten is concerned, yes, they would bring that media value, but they're not they're not an AAU school. They're a, a public school, large public school. They're mm-hmm. a land-grant university, I believe, um, but they're not necessarily a research university. I'm almost, I'm almost positive they're not AAU members, and I don't, I don't no, think that's I'm something sure that they're, 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 yeah. they're even working on. Like yeah. That's just not their, their kind of thing. Um, so they don't necessarily fit that academic profile of the Big Ten. So I would say 100% sure. I feel I feel almost 100 percent confident they're going to get out of the ACC. But if we had to handicap it, I would say probably more 80 percent towards the the SEC and only 20 percent towards the the Big Ten. You know, could they be added on with a Florida State as part of a package deal? Yeah, you, you could. I could see that. It's just not something that I think the Big Ten is really scrambling for right now. And I don't think Clemson really is. I think yeah. they'd rather go to the SEC. Well, and and we're going to get to UNC next. And yeah. there's some things, like I said, I want to cover that we haven't talked about here on the Big Mountain. But before we do that, I want to ask you a question about the Big Ten and the expansion of the Big Ten. Because we know originally when they went uh, after USC and UCLA, Oregon and Washington, I hate to say this for any of the the Ducks and Husky fans. They weren't part of it. They were an afterthought. They weren't even an afterthought. They just weren't part of it. Um, It came along later on. So my question is... I mean, do you feel like the Big Ten wants to be very strategic about moving forward with their expansion? I'm not talking about, you know, reconfiguration within all the conferences. I'm talking specifically to the Big Ten. Because you have a lot of schools, as we've talked about, that are looking to become, they want to get into the power too. So if that's where they want to be, you know, these two SEC Big Ten have the option to say, yeah, we're going to expand to 30 schools. Or they can say, no, we actually only maybe want a few more schools. Do you have any idea of, of where they're sitting right now? I mean, we can go back not too far and see where they were with the west side of things. Now, they ended up getting the four, yeah. but do you, do you have any feeling on that? Yeah, so I think a, a big thing is is the, you know, the presidents always say, you know, they want whoever they add, they want it to be additive. They want to add value to the conference. And with Washington and Oregon, they didn't initially with the TV partners add value. But once they were able to come up to, with an agreement where they took, you know, a lot yes. smaller payout until the next contract comes out, then they made that work. But so I think, you know, but that was kind of a happy accident. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whereas if you're talking about what is their strategy going forward, now, I will say, since the new commissioner has come on board, I haven't gotten as much recent information about their strategy. But okay. I know as far as the previous two commissioners, especially the, the, the Kevin Warren time, uh, the next phase of that expansion plan, the target was to go down that 95 corridor. Mm-hmm. I think you addressed it earlier in the, in, in the episode. 
um, to, to pick up those schools, kind of add, you know, the, the Big Ten was originally a Midwest uh, region conference, right. regional conference. All the conferences were regional, and they were Midwest. Well, what have we seen? The, the Southeast has continued to grow, get population. A lot of Big Ten grads are moving down the 95 corridor, down to the Southeast. You know, um, North Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, are all states that are growing, whereas a lot of the Midwest states are either either shrinking or just growing such a minute amount that really population can't even keep up with the baby, baby boomers dying off. So um, I really think there is a strategic plan to move down that East Coast. So there could be some schools that meet the profile that maybe – are not quite there on the media value today, mm. but that that might meet that because of the markets, the growing markets down that area, that the Big Ten might look at, you know, a 10 year strategy of 10 years from now, right. these schools, even more Big Ten fans are gonna be living in those areas and we wanna add these areas down the 95 corridor. Makes sense. Well, let's get to UNC, uh, the third school that voted against the expansion of the ACC to the West. Things have been a little wishy-washy here uh, in terms of the, the public statements coming out of uh, North Carolina. Um, publicly, they, they did express some displeasure with the uh, FSU filings, uh, you know, back when they first did that in December. The end of January is when the North Carolina Board of Governors president, so this is the entire state's board of education, that their president came out and said that the board would need to see some compelling financial reasons to change conferences, uh, by no means does this mean that they won't leave, uh, but it means that they need approval from both the UNC Board of Trustees and from the State Board of Governors, Educational Board of Governors. Uh, now, last week, we just saw some headlines here, uh, that pretty big headlines, where the Board of Trustees Chairman, so UNC's Chairman of their board, John Pryor, made headlines with some statements um, about the ACC and, and pretty pointed here. I'm going to yeah. go over some of what he said, uh, paraphrasing this a little bit, but it's pretty spot on to what he said. He says uh, the conference is not acting uh, as if it is representing the best interests of the member schools, including the top tier of those schools, Clemson, Florida State, and North Carolina. Instead, it is acting at the expense of those schools and to prop up the bottom tier of the conference in a way that I think, he thinks, is a gross abdication of responsibility, and he lays that at the feet of the commissioner. He went on to say that it seems that the conference and its commissioner want to deny any conversation or latitude that would even potentially allow a member to explore other opportunities. He says, I don't feel like all the members of the conference are being well served by that kind of leadership. Lastly, he also said that he feels what Clemson is doing is proof that a significant portion of the ACC membership is unhappy with the conference. So very pointed words here coming out of the UNC uh, chairman of the board of trustees. Uh, interestingly, some of what he said, language is very, very similar to what is in Clemson's filing in their in their lawsuit. So Steve, with all of that groundwork being laid in, in the public, what are you hearing about UNC uh, and the possibility of, of them, you know, moving to the Big Ten? Is the Big Ten interested in UNC? So as far as UNC is concerned, I want to be careful and, and make a distinction between what I what I know or like what I'm hearing. So, okay. so what I know, actual information I'm getting versus what my opinion is. Okay? Sure. Yep. So what I'm hearing, what I know is that af assuming Florida State's already a done deal and that Florida State's going to eventually end up in the Big Ten. Um, as far as the member schools of the ACC, what I've been told consistently and repeatedly over a period of two to three years is that UNC is the crown jewel of the ACC and of the Big Ten's expansion hopes down the I-95 corridor. Uh, if they can't get them, it kind of blows up that whole, you know, the, the, that whole growth down that yeah. corridor. So yeah. they absolutely, I think the Big Ten is interested. Everything about UNC fits the profile. They don't right now have that football media value that a Florida State or Clemson could have, mm -hmm. does have. Um, however, everything else meets the criteria. They're AAU members, the large flagship university, huge alumni base, um, just great academic reputation. Um, you know, just everything the Big Ten presidents are looking for. 
Um, UNC is right there, and they they're they're bring, even though they don't have a lot of football media value, they do have that brand value of basketball right. and just. The, I mean, everybody knows that powder blue, UNC uh, uniform, those colors. So, anyways, I think UNC is a def, – Big Ten is definitely inter- – I know that the, the Big Ten is definitely interested, mm-hmm. especially certain programs in the Big Ten, like a, a Penn State, like a, an Ohio State, like a Michigan, uh, who, who big schools that have alums that move down into North Carolina. They'd love to, to be down there. Um, now, that's what I know. Okay, here as far as what I think, you yeah. know, some conjecture – there's so much uncertainty there. Um, they could they could stay in the ACC. They could go to the Big Ten. They could end up in the SEC. Who knows? And if anybody says they know for sure, they're, they're just making things up right. because, you know, we, we talk about the decision makers, and you mentioned some of the things uh, about UNC, what they've said. Well, here's the thing. UNC right now has multiple decision makers. There's not one decision maker. Right. You have their AD who's coming out and making comments. I think some of the comments you talked about were negative about Florida State came mm-hmm. from their AD. Mm-hmm. I, I would kind of chalk him up to uh, uh, he's a tobacco road good old boy. You know, he he wants to see, you know, UNC State. You know, to him, the most important thing is the rivalry with Duke right. and North Carolina State, Wake Forest, those Carolina schools and, you know, in that area. So he's one voice. He's one decision maker. And, and I think he does carry a lot of weight, a lot of respect there and, and has carries a lot of weight. Then you have their board of trustees, mm-hmm. which – there, I think it was their chair made some of those yes. comments that you talked about, yeah. which, which it sounds like he's ready to go. Like he's ready to, to, to flush ACC down the toilet right. and move on to, to bigger and better pastures. He's not happy with the leadership. No. Yes. Right. And then you have the, the, the board of governors. Um, and from what I've heard, this is really just speculation, but from what I've heard, the Board of Governors, if they would rather, I think, keep those North Carolina schools together, keep them all in one conference if mm-hmm. possible. Um, there was some reports that they definitely wanted to keep North Carolina and UNC, UNC and North Carolina State together. Right. But I think there's been some backtracking on that. Yes. So it's just a wild card. We don't know. It's too way too early to tell with, with, with UNC right now. Uh, and that'll get into, and I know you want to talk about North Carolina State. Yes, um, that'll get into that. That's that's my thoughts on UNC. Well, well, let's get into North Carolina State. And right before we do, I would say, I mean, when I think of the Big Ten overall mm-hmm. and the big brands of the Big Ten, yep. you know who fits fantastically? I think UNC. UNC. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that brand fits in with the Big Ten, yep. just like their other big brands. I get I get what people are saying about, you know, the football. Give them some time. Give them the revenue of a yep. P2 potentially. Uh, I just when I view UNC, I view them as one of those big, yeah. massive brands that d- deserves a P two type. You, of you could say they're the 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 Michigan of the yeah. Southeast Coast. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I just want to remind everybody that uh, it was the Magnificent Seven uh, that had met with lawyers back in 2023. We're going to get into the the four other Magnificent Seven uh, members here, um, but they, they met back in 2023 with some lawyers to talk about the grant of rights and the future of the ACC. So let's get into one of them, NC State. Um, we're going to start with them, the other university in North Carolina. There was a lot of that kind of hubbub about what the governors came out and said. I don't know if it was so much what they said or the reporting about what they said, and then some clarification was needed about that. But like you said, nobody really knows what's going to happen there. Are they going to want to keep them together? Are they okay if they, they go their separate ways? Again, as as what the um, the president said at the time, back at the end of January, compelling financial reasons. And I would say that's probably for both of those schools. So we'll see what happens. Um, haven't heard a lot of anything coming out of NC State, really. Um, they were the one that had to change their vote or did change their vote to allow for that Western expansion. They were a no for quite a while. And kind of towards the, the very end, the last minute, if you will, they changed their vote to allow that expansion. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot from NC State um, other than this border governor stuff and they're tied at UNC through that uh, educational system. Anything with NC State from you, Steve? Yeah. So I, here's the thing is I, from, again, separating what I hear, what I know, and then just some of my guesses. Yeah. Uh, for, as far as North Carolina State is concerned, I have heard absolutely nothing suggesting that the Big Ten is interested in them. Um, doesn't really know, it doesn't mean that they're not. It's just it's not something that I've heard. It's not something that's really on the radar. Um, they don't necessarily meet the profile exactly right. of what the Big Ten is looking for. And they are a large state university, but they're kind of more looked. They're not. They don't have necessarily the academic prestige as UNC. They're more looked at the the state school, you know, um, you know, the state system school instead of the the, the big prestigious school. 
Um, they're not really known as being a research university. They don't really have that brand right. um, that, that the Big Ten is looking for. I think for me, as far as conjecture and opinion, for me, for NC State, I think they're going to have to be, if they're either to get into the Big Ten or to the SEC, they're going to have to be a plus one. They're yeah, going to have right. to be an add-on. Uh, could could I see the Big you know, the Big Ten is definitely going to be interested in UNC. Could they possibly do a, a plus one package? It's possible, you know, if they really wanted UNC so bad. Um, I, I kind of have my, my doubts about it. And honestly, I think if, I, if I'm the board of governors, okay, um, I, I think the best scenario for, for them from a board of governors perspective is to get a one and one Get UNC. If the UNC goes to the Big Ten, I think the SEC could be interested in moving – uh, and moving into the state of North Carolina, okay, they couldn't get UNC. Maybe they would pick up NC State, and right. you get kind of a one and one. Get get. Other than that, I think it's going to be tough to get both of those in the same power conference. And I just don't think it would do justification to those schools right. financially to leave them out of the power too. Uh, so we'll see what the Board of Governors does. I just don't know if there's a lot of interest or really any interest from the Big Ten. Well, and I, so I was going to add two things. One was that plus one model, which I would be my first. Uh, option of how they probably get into either the Big Ten or the SEC is, is kind of that. Well, mm-hmm. you got to take them both. You yeah. know, it's an all or none type of situation. The other thing I would ask, um, and you've talked about this a few times in, in California, yes. is it okay? Yeah, we'll let UNC go, but there's going to have to be some sharing of that revenue yeah. with NC State or you know the the uh, the Board of Governor, however that works yeah. in, the, in the state of North Carolina. I don't know about how they're governed in that state yeah. for their their education, but you know you've talked about that with California a few times and tying some of that revenue back to the state education so maybe there's something there with that as well and the board of governors did kind of telegraph that in yeah. that move they, they said basically it needs to make sense financially and i think they put something in there like we'd like to see it make financial sense to both schools okay unc they go get a big payout from the big 10 what's in it for nc state do mm-hmm. they get a little crumbs like uh like cal those cal schools yep well let's get to miami so a lot of chatter i hear about miami uh not from miami but from People that want, you know want to try to throw them into the mix here. We've talked about that them before a, a little bit. They seem fairly happy with the ACC. At least it seems like they are. Um, they are in you know, a smaller institution. They are AAU members. Um, so I don't know if they even have a landing spot at this point. You know, I, I think the ones you're hearing the most noise from, I would assume, is because they're hearing from others, from third parties. Let's put it that way. That there's interest in them. So if, if, if nobody's really getting interest from a third party about them, what are they looking for, really, yeah. right? So, um, you know, wh- where are you at with Miami? Anything here? Do you feel like there's a landing spot for this school? So for the longest time, I had been hearing that there was absolutely zero chance for Miami to ever get in the Big Ten. Uh, now, I will say about a year ago, they got AAU membership. Yeah. And uh, one of my contacts at Penn State, I didn't reach out to him. He reached out to me and said, this is a game changer mm-hmm. for Miami. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to get it, it. Basically, you know, it takes their their percentage chance of getting a, a Big Ten invite. doesn't mean it's going to go to 100% chance, but yeah. maybe from zero to like 20. OK, at least they're in the game now. The mm-hmm. AAU membership is, uh, you know, a big deal because the thing is, is other, other than that, they don't meet the Big Ten profile. Right. They're a smaller private school. They are good academically, mm-hmm. um, but they're a smaller private college. They don't have a huge alumni base. They really don't have like. A, a huge fan base as far as filling the stadiums. Um, we haven't really seen recently in the last few years, they don't move the, the needle a ton uh, media wise, unless they're playing another big school. Right. Um, so I don't know if they have a ton of things going with, going for them that, but that AAU membership I think was important, at least gives them a little bit of a chance. But again, like North Carolina state, I see them having to be a plus one. Uh, if the Big Ten were to invite Florida State and they wanted to make it 20 or Florida State wanted to bring another Florida school and right. say, we'll come, but we want to bring Miami, I could see the Big Ten going going for that as, okay, you know, we're getting Florida State plus Miami. Um, but I, to me, that's the way they get into the SEC or the Big Ten is as being an additional. We want to round out the numbers of our conference or another school wants to bring them along. Okay. All right. Well, another school you don't hear much from, although their, their president is – 
the president of the the board for the ACC, that being Virginia, yeah. University of Virginia. Uh, but they do have two things that you've talked about that is of interest to the Big Ten. So I want to hear your take on this. That is AAU membership, and that is going down that I-95 corridor. So two things you've talked about with some other schools. What do you think about Virginia here? Yeah, so like you said, they, they, they meet two. They're, a large, they're the large flagship university for Virginia, um, that market, that corridor. Uh, they're an AAU school, like you said, huge research, hugely important academic prestige. Um, th there's a couple things that hurt Virginia, though. One, um, you know, there can be a, there's an argument to be made that basically uh, the Big Ten is already pretty solid in that northern Virginia market, mm -hmm. whether it being from adding from Maryland or, you know, there's a lot of Penn State fans in that northern Virginia, yes. D.C. market that the Big Ten's already kind of strong in those markets. And so the, the Virginia might not be additive to that. And then another thing, Virginia doesn't bring a lot of media value. They have not been very successful on the field yeah. um, as a program. They don't draw a lot of ratings. Um, so I think they have some things going for them. I think there's, uh, but they have some detractors. So for me, I don't see them as a main target of the Big Ten. And when I've asked about them, I think the Big Ten is interested, kind of keeping them on the burner warm, yeah. but not as a main target, more of a, okay, hey, are we going to add two schools? Are we going to add four schools? Can Virginia help round us out? And I've actually heard that that UNC, um, if, if Virgin, the Virginia rivalry is very important to them, okay. that if UNC were to come along, uh, outside of the schools in North Carolina, the next most important would be Virginia. Okay. Uh, so maybe we could see them as a package deal. Interesting. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, we especially on the college football uh, podcasts and, and, you know, people that like to opine on this, which is what we're doing on this episode, yeah. you know, very, very focused on how well do they do on the field, what are their me media rights values, and I – I know. I mean, we've done episodes about how important the media right values are yes. in these decisions, but the academics are very, very important yes. too. Whether that's AAU or, or you know, however they're going to define that, they're also very important. Um, a lot of people don't. You bring it up briefly, you know, and I don't want to go down a rabbit hole on that. But they're they're very important. I think they're very important to the Big Ten. Uh, as, yes. you, as you've stated, you know, and, and that's why this AAU stuff matters to the Big Ten. And there's a, a lot of people say, oh, academics doesn't matter. If it did, it would be Ivy League schools. Well, that's because you don't understand what we mean when we say academic. Sure. We're not talking about, uh, you know, a, a Ivy League or, or like super stuffy liberal arts school. We're talking about large public research universities when yep. we say academics. There's it's yes, it's all about money. But there, are, there is money in research, just yes. like there is in athletics. And the, that's the Big Tens. That's their whole game plan. Their whole that's that's them uh, is to combine, uh, you know, s superior athletic programs with large research universities and and build that that powerful conglomerate that and just eat up all the money. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, again, we focus on the media revenues of college mm -hmm. football. The research revenues are massive sure. as well. So, you know, you know. Again, don't want to try to get down that rabbit hole. Let's get to the last one here of the Magnificent Seven. Then we'll go to uh, those left out of the Magnificent Seven. So Virginia Tech, the last one we haven't talked about them. Um, again, really haven't heard a whole lot. Anything you have on Virginia Tech, Steve? Again, similar to some of the other schools, I, I think the from from what I've heard um, through my Penn State contacts is the Big Ten's just not super interested in Virginia Tech. They've looked at them in the past. They do meet some of the profile, but not really all. They're probably like a 50% match on the profile. Right. They bring some media value, but not a huge amount. Um, I think they're very far down on the list. I don't think that they're a, an absolute no, but I think they would have to be kind of uh, – combined with with a package deal and let's say the big 10 wanted to add two or four or six yep. and they needed to round it out um you could see maybe virginia tech getting added on and honestly i think virginia tech their culture i, I lived in virginia a couple different times mm -hmm. the culture of the school and the fan base i think they would be a much better fit with the sec mm -hmm. as far as how important you know football is to them and, and different factors um and just a better cultural fit in the sec than than the Big Ten, so I don't really see them as a potential Big Ten member. One thing that'll be interesting to watch there: years ago, when the ACC was 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 expanding and, and and bringing in other schools, the the governor of Virginia, Mark Warner at the time, now he's a senator, he stepped in and basically made it so that the two of them were a package deal. Mm -hmm. I've said I didn't think that that would matter this time as much, but I have heard some rumblings, you know, and you hear these different rumblings. We heard them with Texas A&M, we heard them with Washington and Washington State, that some politicians want to get involved and make them a package deal. 
Um, but again, for me, I would say if you're going to do them the best service, I could see a situation where Virginia could get a big Big Ten invite and Virginia Tech could get an SEC sure. invite. Yep. So why would you put it on them that to, to screw both of them out of that chance? Right. And if politicians get involved, they could easily do that. Yep. Um, so I, very unlikely that I see them in the Big Ten. So let's summarize real quick before we get to the others. What I'm hearing from you, both in terms of your knowledge and, and understanding of what you're hearing from Penn State, and also uh, just your opining of, of understanding these schools and things. You've got FSU and UNC as the most likely targets um, of a, a Big Ten expansion mm -hmm. to the South. Yep. Um, and then maybe the plus ones, I hate to say that, but the plus ones being either Miami, NC State, Virginia, just kind of dependent upon the situation either within the state or, uh, you know, again, you mentioned UNC and, and Virginia, if yep. they want to have that. So kind of two main targets, if you will, and then maybe some plus one one schools kind of below that level. Definitely. And I, and I wouldn't rule out Clemson. I just don't think it's very likely. I think I don't know that the Big Ten is super interested. Okay. And I think Clemson's more interested in, in the SEC. SEC. So, but I wouldn't totally rule them out. So let's get to the other schools, the schools that uh, the UNC chairman says that they're propping up and and quite frankly if i just may i'm, I'm gonna opine on that just mm -hmm. just a little bit um and, and take just a moment to push back on that that comment um but i, I kind of would ask him what he thinks about some of the universities in the sec and big 10 right now and are some of the large schools in we'll use the big 10 mm -hmm. uh propping up some of the smaller schools in the big so you know he you can't look at that in isolation of just the acc it's kind of happening everywhere, different scales for sure, mm -hmm. but it, but it's happening in other conferences, yes. is it not? Yes. So, now I'll say, if I, if I could push back on that just a little bit. Go ahead. You're absolutely right. There are, but but let's, let's, so let's look at the Big Ten. In the Big Ten, you have, we'll say, Northwestern and Rutgers are two examples. Yep. Well, Northwestern is in that Chicago market. Mm -hmm. So big city market, they've invested in their program. You can get those big teams going and playing in Chicago. Rutgers in the New, York, New Jersey, Philly, New York City metro markets, you can get the big schools playing there. Schools like you're going to, I think you're going to bring up, well, I'll just pick on one. I always pick on them. A Wake Forest. Okay. And, the, and my, my wife's family is from the area not too far. BFE North Carolina. Okay. okay. <laughs> it, it, there, it, there's nothing around there. It's not a big population. Most of the population there could, you know, cares much more about NASCAR sure. and, and raising tobacco than they do about college sports. Um, and, you know, there's a big, like, if you compare Wake Forest to a Northwestern or a Rutgers, I think there's a huge difference. Understandable, understandable. So let's get to them now. Um, <clears throat> so the two AAU schools that we haven't talked about, Georgia Tech, although yeah. we did talk about them briefly. We talked about them on the live episode just, just a little bit, and we talked about them before as well. But AAU, Georgia Tech, and Pittsburgh. And then the schools that are not, you've got Duke, Louisville, Syracuse, Wake Forest, mm -hmm. and the newest comer, at least until these other three join, Boston College. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm sorry if anybody's here from those schools. I hate to kind of lump you in together on the outside of the Magnificent Seven, but for the for the uh, time that it's going to take to go these one ways, I'm going to lump them together and see if Steve has any comments on any of those schools. Well, first of all, I'll say, you know, Boston College, I wish them the best. I love me some Bill O'Brien, the Magnificent Butt Chin. We there got the Magnificent go. Seven. These guys might be the Magnificent <laughs> Seven, but Boston College has the Magnificent Butt Chin. So. There you go. Uh, and I think he'll do well there. He's a great coach. Yeah. I don't see a chance in hell that uh, Boston College would ever get an invite to the Big Ten or to the SEC, obviously. Sure. Um, they just don't meet the profile. They're they're you know they they're quickly becoming a relic. We'll see what Bill O'Brien can do there, mm -hmm. but um, you know they just don't meet the profile. Don't see anything there. You know Wake Forest. I already talked about. Yeah. I, Pitt. I just see absolutely no shot. The Big Ten. I, a. I don't think Penn State would want to to Pitt to come in, and B. I don't know that the Big Ten. Uh, they already get what they need out of Pennsylvania from Penn State. Like you're not going to gain anything from adding Pitt whatsoever. And well, and really, if you go, if I can interrupt you yeah. quickly, if you go just to the west of Pittsburgh, you're in uh, Ohio, Ohio State yes, territory. Yes. You go just to the east of Pittsburgh, you're in the Penn State. Although you're probably in Penn State territory within Pittsburgh too. Yeah. So you're not. It's not a new market. For no, you. not at all. Yeah. So it's not additive in any way. Right. There's two schools that I want to point out there, and and I will say the first. So the first one is Georgia Tech. Yeah. I have been. A, I don't think they're a main target. Okay, let me just put that out there. I don't think they're a main target of the Big Ten. 
Uh, and I've gotten a lot of flack on some of the Penn State message boards that I've said people shouldn't totally throw them out and discount them completely because they do meet. They don't have much media value right now with yep. the way their program has performed. However, they are in that Atlanta media market. Um, and I know you will have people say Georgia Tech doesn't matter. Only Georgia matters. OK, well, <laughs> what could happen in 10 years with that revenue of the Big Ten if they could start to rec- there's enough talent in the state of Georgia and the surrounding states to yep. go around. If they could get that big revenue and really make football a priority, hire a good coach. When you get all that extra revenue, you can make better hires, hire more staff. Georgia Tech, I think, has a chance. And if they do, they're a long-term investment. They're 10, 15 years down the road of Big Ten membership um, in that that market. So I think they are a possibility as as just as much as some of these – Magnificent Seven schools. Like yeah. I would put them right there with a, with a Virginia Tech, with an NC State, with a Miami, maybe even with a Virginia, as okay. they're a possibility. I don't think they're a main target. I could see them being an a plus one or an addition if 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 the Big Ten wanted to add two, four, or six schools. Yeah. Um, so that's one school. The other one I think has probably less than a one percent chance. Um, is Duke okay? Uh, but they are in they less than one percent, more than zero <laughs> percent. Um, I could see a scenario. Yeah, they're a private school, but they're they're you know they're a great research university, high academic profile. They have some decent brand value. Yes. Uh, and I could see a situation where in the in the realm of possibility, where UNC was going to come along and they wanted to bring, let's say UNC was like, yes, we will go to the Big Ten, but we want to bring Virginia and we want to bring Duke with us. I could see the Big Ten making that deal and saying, okay, you know what? That that makes sense. You add to the basketball conference. You add to the brand, uh, the brand value. So I don't think that, that they're a main target whatsoever, but I could see them as a package deal with somebody um, that the Big Ten wouldn't veto. But the rest of those schools in there, absolutely no chance whatsoever. If I may quantify that, because mm-hmm. I, 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 can, I can envision a commenter right now saying, Steve, Duke has no chance. Just remember, Steve said greater than 1%. That doesn't mean even a 10% chance. Right. It just means there is a small chance, you know, as they say in Dumb and Dumber. So you're saying there's, there's a, a chance. chance. And I would say, I would actually, I mean, maybe it wasn't clear. I would say greater than 0% oh, okay, chance. okay, I'm sorry. But maybe not greater than 1%. One. Okay. It might <laughs> yeah. be about a 1% chance. Well, let me get back to Georgia Tech real quick, and then we'll get to the last school that yes. we're going to talk about. Yes. The, you know, another crown jewel, if you will, mm-hmm. at least they think they are, Notre Dame. But I want to talk about uh, Georgia Tech again, because yes. you talked, I want and I want to relate it to what you said earlier regarding UNC and NC State. You said, hey, you could have split them. You get a Big Ten and an SEC school. Look at Virginia. Split them. You have a Big Ten with Virginia. You know, potentially SEC is Virginia Tech. And then you brought up the fact that, oh, the only thing that matters in Georgia is Georgia, uh, the University of Georgia. Well, guess what? They're already in the SEC. And if the Big Ten wants to get a footprint in there, they're not going to get Georgia. Um, So go after Georgia Tech. And you could see those three states, Virginia, North Carolina and Georgia, which are the states that, you know, the Big Ten wants to get in. I, I left out uh, Florida, but heck, split Florida. I don't know. Yeah. You know, take, uh, well, they already have Florida, so it's yeah. FSU, right? So, right. you know, you could have those, the two main universities and every one of those being split up between the power conferences. Not out of the realm of possibility, for sure. Absolutely so. not. Notre Dame, Steve. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything other than to say, what do you have on them? So we always we talk about the magnificent seven, and I would add when you when you throw Notre Dame in there, you can make it a crazy eight. There you go. Um, and, and here's the thing: is uh, I, I've said this on a few episodes. Um, I, from what I understand, NBC, who who just renewed with Notre Dame, mm-hmm. they want to see Notre Dame playing more Big Ten opponents. Mm-hmm. Um, NBC has the Notre Dame package and. They have a Big Ten package that they've invested heavily in. Um, Notre Dame, when, when Notre Dame plays most of the schools in the ACC outside of like a you know a Clemson or maybe a Florida State, yeah. the ratings are just not that great. They're not getting a, much of a return on a, investment. Um, but when they play Big Ten schools, it's massive ratings, especially you know the the bigger Big Ten schools. So yeah. NBC, and that's their their bread and butter. That's who they're they kind of in bed with. You know the Big Ten is in is is paired up with Fox, the SEC is paired up with ESPN, and Notre Dame is paired with NBC. So I think eventually you're going to see Notre Dame, be, it's going to be whittled down and whittled down. They'll eventually be a part of the Big Ten in some way. Is that as a full member? Who knows? Uh, is that as a like a like a 20 plus one and Notre Dame has some kind of uh, a uh, scheduling agreement with the Big Ten? But I, I, I think 
every year you will see them move more and more away from the ACC and closer to the Big Ten, have more games with the Big Ten. Well, does that mean they eventually become a full-time member? I think probably, but it's it's probably not going to happen quick because they are going to hold on to that independence as long as they can. A lot of it's going to depend on other things like the college football playoff, which we just renewed, and they, ha they currently have a path to the 12-team playoff. So there's not a lot of pressure for them there. So for our my Big Ten fans that want to see Notre Dame in the Big Ten, have patience. I think we'll, it's, it's going to come in baby steps, and we'll just have to see what form it takes. Okay. All right. Well... You know, Steve, we've done a couple of these in the past, and I wanted to focus on the ACC for several reasons, as, as I started with. First off, because we've been following a lot of what's been going on, thanks to FSU. Um, but before when we did these, there was more speculation and you giving us some information from your in, uh, uh, behind the scenes, you know, type of dealings with, with Penn State and what you're hearing there. Now we've got two schools that have filed lawsuits yep. against the ACC. Yep. So this is no longer speculation. It's now happening, and very strong words coming from UNC. I don't know if that means a lawsuit is coming, uh, but we will see. And, yeah, I mean, it's not speculation anymore. Um, and I appreciate what you had to, to, to bring to us here from your, your connections there up at Penn State. Certainly some of these schools do seem to make sense. I am not suggesting anybody's poaching anyone as you know steve i'm a mountain west guy i don't want anybody poaching the mountain west yeah. but this is a little different these schools aren't uh getting poached they want to get out because they see what's happening yes. so uh, right now they're trying to figure out how can they get out of their conference doesn't mean they're going to well fsu it means they're going to um and i would say clemson yeah it probably means they're going to too um but you know, and, I, and I'm sure some ACC members would be like, well, yeah, or fans are going to, yeah, they're getting poached. Uh, I don't know if you're getting poached if you're the ones begging to get the heck out of contracts. Yeah, right the people now. who tried to lock the door before are the ones that are trying to bust the doors down. Right. Now, so. There you go. So, hey, with that, thank you guys for watching. We are going to stay on things all expansion, realignment based here for college football. As I said, we have live episodes that we're doing now every week. Our next one is actually going to be on Thursday this coming week. We've been doing Wednesdays. Have to switch it just for this one week to Thursday. So if you're interested to join us, please check out our channel. Make sure you give this one a like. Make sure you subscribe if you like our content. And with that, we'll hope to see you guys next time on the Big Mountain.